Welcome to Money Controls the week that was where we highlight the top stories of the week. Four Indian Army soldiers including an officer have been killed in action during an encounter with terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir's Doda district. Captain Rajesh Thapa, Naik Rajesh, Sipoy Bijendra and Sipoy Ajay laid down their lives in the line of duty. According to officials, a joint operation by the Indian Army and the Jammu and Kashmir police was launched in the Desa area of Doda based on specific information about the presence of terrorists. Cross firing continued for two days, injuring two soldiers the next day of the attack. This was the second major encounter in Jammu region after five soldiers were killed in action in Katwa last week. At least four people were killed and around 20 sustained injuries after several boogies of the Diburga Express derailed in Uttar Pradesh's Gonda on July 18. Uttar Pradesh Relief Commissioner reported that 20 people were injured in the accident. The train was coming from Chandigarh and the accident took place between UP's Jilhali Railway Station and Gosai Diva in Uttar Pradesh. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath has directed the district authorities to ensure all proper treatment to those who were injured in the accident. Tensions are mounting along the Kavar Yatra route in Uttar Pradesh following a new government directive requiring all shops and eateries to prominently display the names of their owners and employees. This order, which affects the vast swath of the Yatra route leading from Haridwar in Uttarkhand, has sparked concerns among local traders particularly those from minority communities. The order has prompted a broader political and social debate, with the opposition questioning the state government's divisive politics. And Microsoft has faced a widespread outage, leading to disruptions across multiple services and leaving users worldwide experiencing the infamous blue screen of death. This IT breakdown primarily linked to an issue with CrowdStrike's Falcon sensor software has caused significant disruption across banking, aviation and hospital services worldwide. The outage had a global impact affecting various platforms such as the Microsoft 365 Azure, Amazon Web Services and even social media sites like Instagram and eBay. Sky News displayed the blue screen for several hours as programming was disrupted for hours on July 19th. And in earnings reports, Infosys delivered a stronger-than-expected Q1 FY25 result. India's second-largest information technology company raised its current financial year 2024-25 revenue growth guidance to 3-4%. to Net profit rose by 7.1% on a year-on-year basis, coming in at 6,368 crore rupees, beating street estimates, while revenue from operations rose by 3.6% at 39,315 crore rupees. Meanwhile, Wipro's Q1 net profits rose by 4.6% from a year ago at 3,003 crore rupees, although the IT company's April to June consolidated revenues fell by 3.8% at 21,964 crore rupees. Wipro too revised its annual revenue guidance slightly upwards. Moving on to the big bank earnings, where private sector lender HDFC Bank reported a 35.3% rise in its profit after tax at 16,174 crore rupees in the quarter one. The bank's consolidated net profit grew by 33.17% at 16,474 crore rupees, but on a sequential basis, HDFC Bank's net profits fell by 2.1%. Meanwhile, Kotak Mahindra Bank was the other big earnings, wherein the bank reported a net profit of 6,250 crore rupees in the April to June quarter, and 81% higher than the 3,452 crore it had reported in the corresponding quarter last year. The lender's net profit also saw a boost of 3,012 crore rupees in its profit after tax due to the bank's stake sale in its insurance subsidiary Kotak General Insurance to Zurich Insurance Group. Reliance Industries reported a 11.5% increase in its revenues at 2.58 lakh crore rupees in the first quarter, bolstered by contributions across segments. The company's net profit dropped by 4.5% at 17,445 crore rupees as EBITDA in the oil to chemical or O2C business declined 
whereas higher depreciation and finance cost also weighed on the bottom line. However, consolidated EBITDA rose by 2% from a year ago at 42,748 crore rupees. Geo platforms revenues from operations also rose by 12.8% from last year coming in at 29,449 crore rupees. Geo's average revenue per user or ARPU was seen at 181.7 rupees with better subscriber mix partially offset by increasing mix of promotional 5G traffic being offered at an unlimited basis to subscribers and not charged separately. Baiju's has moved NCLAT, challenging a court order which allowed insolvency proceedings to be initiated against the company. Baiju's said that it sought an urgent hearing on the matter. The Chennai bench of the NCLAT may take up the matter early next week, acting on the plea filed by BCCI against the company over non-payment of dues amounting to 159 crore rupees. The Bengaluru bench of the NCLT earlier this week had admitted Baiju's parent think and learn into the corporate insolvency resolution process or IBC. Donald Trump accepted the Republican presidential nomination in front of thousands of Republican supporters just days after the former president survived an assassination attempt. Donald Trump entered the Republican National Convention with a bandage covering his right ear. In his speech, the longest convention acceptance address in recent US history, Trump called for the unity as he recounted details from the attempt on his life. He then outlined key campaign promises on the economy and the border and repeated false claims in an off-script address. Violent crashes between police and student protesters in Bangladesh has resulted in at least 39 deaths. The protests have seen several government buildings being torched. The clashes have caused widespread telecommunication disruption, with many overseas calls failing to connect and local internet services severely impacted. The unrest is fueled by anger over civil services hiring rules and rising unemployment. About 300 Indians, though, have returned to safety, according to the External Affairs Ministry. Surya Kumar Yadav has beat Hardik Pandya to the post of captain of the Indian team in the shortest format following Mumbai Indians teammate Rohit Sharma's retirement from the T20 International. BCCI unveiled India's squad for the upcoming tour in Sri Lanka, naming Surya Kumar as the captain. The star batter had previously captained the men in blue against Australia and South Africa in home and away respectively in the late 2023. All-rounder Pandya was widely expected to succeed Rohit in the role, however, Surya Kumar Yadav has pipped Hardik Pandya to the post. <laughs>